Nothing when we there. spoke the last time, you were finance minister, now you're a trade minister. What are you hoping to do differently? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, um, it's a new portfolio for me. The uh, government just been formed about a month and a half ago. And today we're here in Davos again. Um, so the focus as a trade minister, obviously, is to ensure that uh, trade could, uh, continues to be one of the key drivers of growth for, for Malaysia and investment as well. So these are the two areas that we're focusing. And of course, industry is part of the portfolio, uh, focusing on industries that gives that high quality investments that Malaysia wants uh, to see. Mm. There is great competition for FDI, yes. especially within the ASEAN regions, in particular Vietnam. I mean, what's your strategy to get that FDI you need? Yes. Well, if you look at ASEAN, we have not just Vietnam, we have Thailand, Indonesia, everyone uh, going after, I guess, the same kind of investment. Uh, and for Malaysia, we, you know, we were, uh, we have been and since the 1970s focusing on certain sectors, especially the e, &E uh, se sector, the semiconductor sector. And today, it has, you know, contributed uh, meaningfully to GDP is about 6% of GDP and we are the seven largest uh, um, supplier of semiconductor uh, for the world. Um, so how are we going to compete uh, going forward? I think the focus will have to be on making it easier, ease of doing business. I think that's one of the ch um, key uh, opportunities for Malaysia um, to uh, improve itself on. I think uh, so my focus will be to ensure that when it comes to investments, the ease of doing investments in Malaysia uh, will be uh, improved. Realistically, mm. how much FDI can you attract this year? Yeah. Because uh, in the first nine months of last year, you attracted about 45 billion yeah, you're right. uh, US right. dollars, right. and that's pale in comparison from, uh, from before. Yes, I think, of course, the, the, in terms of growth, uh, it was a positive growth, but you're right in absolute terms compared to pre-pandemic. Uh, um, it's not as strong as before. Um, you know, but trade has improved, um, and so how do we focus back on FDI? So I think we need to go back to basics. We need to look at what are the areas... Realistically, how much are you looking at attracting so, of for course, 2023? Okay, so we, we link it to, to, of course, the economy. I think you know 2023 global economy is expected to face some headwinds. Uh, Malaysia uh, growth is expected to be around 4 to 5%, uh, but investment is about global, global trade, global investment. So for us, uh, we have a target. Yeah, and the target obviously uh, is about 20% increase uh, from uh, last year. Uh, we've seen trade also increase about 30%, close to 30% compared to last year. Uh, but again, it's the measure of FDI, right? Um, to me, traditionally, measuring FDI is about the absolute dollar value that comes to Malaysia. But how much of those is realised? How much of those is translated to jobs? You know, what is the spillover effects? I think that's key. And the number has to be a number that focuses on the a right kind of investment. A 20% increase is pretty conservative. Uh, it's not to me, given the, um, like I said, the economic uh, landscape, the global economic landscape. But we do have a China that's reopening. And China is the mm. biggest trading partner, accounting for about 20% of, Malaysia, yes, of your investments. Can yeah. China provide that boost? And why not more than that? Yeah. OK, um, if you... Take into account China, um, of course, um, there's still uncertainty there and there will be a lag effect. All right? So maybe you, you're right there, there's a bit of uh, being a bit conservative. Um, but again, um, no one knows of the impact of China for 2023. I think 2024 is clearer, but 2023, um, there will be challenges. And of course, in the commodity sector, um, it's an, a sector that uh, will consume uh, what China wants, uh, but for the uh, manufacturing sector, it will take. There will be a lag uh, for 2023. CPTPP, mm -hmm. Malaysia signed CTPPP last year. Yes. Now there are some murmurings mm -hmm. of some resistance to that signing. Will Malaysia relook, review that mm -hmm. signing? Yeah, that was discussed. Uh, in fact, it was one of the first uh, topic of discussion in the cabinet. Um, it was, as you know, correctly stated just now. It was uh, ratified. Uh, by the government uh, in November uh, and in December the new government was formed uh, and we had a discussion we explained uh, what are the concerns uh, what are the mitigating factors and the cabinet has agreed uh, you know the Prime Minister himself of course uh, has agreed that we will continue uh, with what was the decision that was made before um, and we'll monitor this closely uh, but have, we have also made a, a, a public announcement that uh, we are continuing with CPTPP. The ringgit has been a laggard, especially mm -hmm. when compared to regional uh, peers. Mm -hmm. How comfortable are you with the level of the currency and where do you see yep. uh, the ringgit headed? Okay. 
Well, now I'm wearing my treat, uh, Minister in Industry uh, uh, Portfolio. Um, I can try and comment on it as an independent. <laughs> uh, we look at Ringgit. I think you, you again, you know, you um, we have to look at. Uh, the, the the growth of of the of, of the economy, right? Uh, for Malaysia, um, we are expecting uh, projecting a growth of between four to five percent, um, and we are seeing that um, the ringgit has actually uh, strengthened uh, to where it was before, right? But I think what your point is relatively to other uh, currencies. So Malaysia's growth uh, will have an will have a bearing on on, on the strength of the ringgit uh, this year. I think, yeah, mm. that will be the key determinant. So you're comfortable with where? The currency is shredded. Well, it is. A, 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 well, ringgit is floated freely. Um, so you know, it is mar markets that dictate uh, the value of ringgit. And from the trade perspective, from investment perspective, uh, as a, as long as we are comparatively uh, moving in the same direction with the basket of countries that are trading with us, we should be okay. What's the status of global trade? What's your mm. perspective on it, given? Greater calls for friendshoring, onshoring, reshoring, deglobalization. Re <laughs> um, yeah, well, it has been a major debate uh, in, in, in Davos, WF, and even before that, um, and, and Malaysia and many other emerging markets um, have been discussing uh, what are our options, right? Because we always hear from the perspective of the global large economies. Um, in the short to medium term, I must admit. Uh, that we do enjoy some of the spillover effects of that concerns about how so and quantify that. Okay, how so? Because the concern about supply chain, right? The supply chain resiliency, security of that supply chain, and because of the uh, so-called geopolitics between two major countries in the US case, and China, US, China, and many what you just say the reshoring, uh, onshoring, friendshoring, uh, and Malaysia and you know, ASEAN as a whole has somewhat benefited in the medium and short term. But in the longer term, we all agree that uh, it will not be good uh, for globalization. We are asking whether globalization, globalization is dead or not. People are saying, yeah, globalization is still happening, but it's slowing. They're talking about globalization, right? People are asking whether um, people are focusing on whether globalization is, uh, has failed, you know? But to me, we need to go back to fundamentals. You know, the reason why uh, we, uh, you know, are, as Malaysia and the world is trading is because it's something that will benefit all, right? Uh, so I think what's important uh, going forward is that the leadership of these major economies uh, need to understand uh, that uh, trade uh, is an important part. Uh, there is uh, concern, of course, about security, but between security and growth, uh, you need to balance that. Uh, How much have supply chain disruptions eased in your view? Yeah, the supply chain, okay, pre-pandemic levels, we have not gone back to where it was before, right? And it, after the pandemic, it has improved, uh, but there's still major concerns. There are major concerns about labour, labour shortage. There's major concern about uh, stock uh, input shortage. In fact, there's sometimes hoarding of, the, of that uh, input, especially in certain sectors. Uh, so we are still need room for, for improvement. But again, uh, it, it is driving prices up. It is driving inflation up. So I think um, the, 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 what you mentioned earlier uh, about, you know, countries putting in extra policy measures uh, that may be protective in nature uh, doesn't help that supply chain. There are expectations that oil could get to $110 mm. per mm. barrel. You're an oil producing country. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on where oil is headed? Yeah. Well, people are saying, economists are saying that one of the reasons is because of China, right? The reopening of China um, will mean that, as mentioned, it's not the demand for commodities, energy, will increase uh, and therefore uh, prices are expected to go up. So for Malaysia, obviously, as a net exporter of commodities as well as uh, energy in terms of oil as well, we you know, stand to benefit from that. However, as you know, um, it does mean that we also need to be fiscally uh, responsible about assisting those people who are uh, in need uh, given the higher energy prices. How much will that contribute to growth? Well, I don't have that figure for 2023. Uh, I think the budget uh, uh, will be announced by the new Prime Minister, the new Finance Minister on 24th of February, and that's when he, uh, or Prime Minister, will be announcing uh, the, the official new revised uh, budget uh, for Malaysia. What is there to look forward to in terms of the budget? As Finance Minister, you're pushing for higher value uh, creation in the industries. As Trade Minister now, what are you hoping to see? Yes. Well, first of all, you know, 
we did present the budget for 2023, and then a week later, uh, it was a dis the, the uh, parliament was dissolved. Uh, I must say, I wish I'd given more budget to the Ministry of Trade. Uh, but however, um, you, the focus, um, and I think uh, our Prime Minister is focusing on governance, uh, focusing on uh, quality of life, which is the cost of living, and growth, right? Uh, so I hope uh, in this budget, uh, allocation that's given uh, to the relevant initiatives uh, that will drive our economic growth. Uh, for Malaysia. For trade, what are you hoping for to see? So for trade, I'm hoping to see a, a, a budget uh, that will allow us to attract more investments through uh, a mechanism where it makes it easier for investors. Of course, like, easier means incentives, ease of doing business. Um, the other thing about Malaysia is, you know, opening up uh, to, to uh, we're always talking about capital, right? It's in dollar capital, but also we need to look at human capital. Uh, so perhaps we need to be more open about getting uh, top talent uh, into Malaysia.